So before we jump into the demo, let's have a quick look at how Audio Gridder works. So you have the AG plugin and you have the AG server component. Uh, you put the server usually on a separate machine on your network and you put the plugin into your DAWs um, insert rack. So um, on the server side, you have a plugin host which supports audio units and VST plugins. And then you can control the server using uh, the plugin. So the plugin connects to the server and you can select any of the available plugins on the server side and put it into the AG plugin instance running in the DAW. And then the audio gets streamed to the server and processed by the plugin on the server and streamed back into the DAW. So there's no CPU usage uh, for that processing on the DAW side. Um, and the plugin UI is shown, is rendered by the server too, and then also streamed into the AG plugin on the DAW side. So you can see the plugin UI and you can control it as if the plugin would run locally in your DAW. So that gives you a pretty uh, close experience to how um, you would usually load a plugin directly on the DAW, but in this case, uh, not running it locally. Now, how does it look in a real project? So let's have a quick look at the server. We open the VNC connection to the server. Uh, you see the tray app there, um, and you can open the settings, change the server name or anything else. Um, you can manage your plugins on the server side. You can trigger rescans as well, or restart the server, whatever you need to do. Um, and then on the DAW, if we hit play just for some audio, um, in all the channels in this project, there's just one AG instance. Um, so all the audio goes to the server and gets processed there. And if we open the rack, you see the plugins loaded in a chain. Um, you can open the plugins, you can modify settings by just using your mouse keyboard and work with the plugin as if it would be running locally. Um, you can open multiple AG instances as well. Um, just open another one. And if we look at the AG UI real quick, there's a server menu where you can select the server to connect to, um, you can change the buffer size, etc. And then again, just open the plugin UI and, and work with it. Um, there's also a generic editor that you could use. Um, it's in the settings. Uh, you can select it if the UI doesn't work. You can directly modify plugin parameters that way too. Now what happens on the server side? Um, so if we uh, like open another rack um, and open a plug-in there, you actually see that the server is opening that plug-in. And then it's capturing the screen and sends that into the door, into the AG plug-in. So you actually see um, the plug-in there as if it was uh, there locally, right? Uh, if you want to analyze things, if you want to uh, look at performance problems you have, there's a, uh, there's a statistics screen on the server side, as well as on the plugin side, by the way, and there you can see the network I.O., um, latency, etc. So if you need to investigate problems, then just look at that. By the way, the uh, remote screen, the server connector doesn't need to stay open, so you can just close it and uh, audio grid will still work. So we just close it here. And then there's another component that we might want to look at. That's the plugin monitor. You can open that here and you actually see the different AG instances loaded and also the latency on each channel there. What happens if we want to add a new plugin? So let's add a new AG plugin here to a channel. And if we look at the plugin, how do you find remote plugins actually? So um, press the plus button and then you see all the remote plugins. There's a plugin menu and you can just uh, navigate through it. There's the different plugin formats and you can just open them by vendor. You can actually also change uh, if you want to see the vendors or the, the categories here. But you can also actually, you can search for it. So if there's a lot of plugins you have, you might want to just use the search function here as we do it and then select the plugin from there and then and load it, right? So, and again, just open the UI and, and you can modify it and, and work with it. And that's it basically.